So I got a worm cafe free from Marketplace, which I was so excited about. And today I'm gonna to be setting it up. So the first thing you wanna do with anything like this is give it a good clean. You wanna make sure there's no bacteria or fungus or any nasties coming in from other foreign places. So I gave it a good clean. And then next up, I'm adding aged horse manure. This is a bag uh, that the guy gave me that I purchased the worms from. So I got the worms off Marketplace as well from a local guy who had huge, big worm farms in, in bathtubs. And and he used aged horse manure, so it's really old. It's basically just hay. It's not hot. It's got not got any seeds in it. So I used this at the bottom of the tray and then put the worms in, which had heaps of worm casting as well. Put another layer of the aged horse manure on top. So I've got it on the bottom and on the top, which kind of acts as a bedding and also provides food and places for the worms to hide and uh, lay eggs. Make sure you give it a good water down, keep it nice and moist. And then it's all ready to go. So I have this in a really shady corner of my property. It's going to get full shade all year round. And with all the sweet potato and uh, passion fruit behind it, that extra foliage is going to also help keep it cool as well. He was really generous to give me, you know, huge big bucketfuls. And don't waste any of the good stuff using the rinsing out the pots and containers to add that goodness to the garden. So next up, I thought I'd take a few cuttings from my mulberry tree. I do this usually in autumn because it's long it's been a long time since it's fruited and it's we get so much wind that i'm constantly needing to cut it back so that it doesn't damage the other plants around it um, it acts as a little bit of a whip it's very bendy and it whips the other plants around so every now and then i take some cuttings and i do this from the semi hardwood i remove all the leaves pretty much all the leaves and the young green parts of the stem and all the leaves go back into the garden. Everything from this garden goes back into the garden. I use a lot of chop and drop methods here. And um, these cuttings I then will put in a jar of water or a bucket of water till they start to root a little bit and then pop them into containers. Another job that I'm so excited to do is start to plant out my food forest style garden in the front yard. I have existing fruit trees there, but I wanted to fill in the gaps and create more of a food forest style garden like I have at the back. Okay, so I'm about to start planting out my front, filling in the gaps with some fruit trees. So some of these I've had for a few months, I've just been keeping in the pots over summer because it was too hot to plant out into the garden or they would have just died. So I have a feed jar that I, plant, I bought last year that I've been waiting to plant out and I've just bought another feed jar. So I've got two different feed jar trees to go in. Um, I've got a large guava. I think it's like a Taiwanese guava. It's got really big fruit. So I've got that to go in. I have an apricot that's been in there for a while and it's not really doing anything. I don't think it loves the position that it's in. It gets a lot of full sun. So I'm going to take that out actually and pop that um, in a pot for now until it can go into a new place and potentially fill that gap as well. Um, although at this stage I've only got three trees yeah I've got three trees three main big gaps so those trees will go in and then I'm going to fill all the other gaps in with um, pollinator plants um, middle layer ground cover herbs all the things to really fill all the gaps up and make it a really lush 
edible screen cover that also has a lot of diversity and that is super important I think that's what has really struggled out the front here I haven't had that diversity I haven't had that density so it's just really hot dry barren compared to my food forest style garden out the back which is covered with um, different layers and keeps a lot of moisture in So although I have a really sandy soils, these garden beds already have improved soil in them so I don't have to do anything but if you were just planting these straight in the ground with poor soil I would definitely add some compost in the hole as well um, but these, the soil is all ready to go so all I have to do is dig the holes and push down firmly so that they're secure and stake them because we have really windy weather at the moment and I don't want the little stems to snap. So I'm often moving things around and don't be afraid to move things around if it just doesn't work, if things aren't thriving in that position or you want to move them elsewhere. I just try to take as much of the soil with it as possible and disturb the roots as less as possible and give it a good water. Don't do this on a really hot day, it's very cloudy at the moment and it's actually quite cool so this was um, a great day although the sun did keep popping out. Of it, popping out um, it has been cool and a little bit rainy the last few days so this is the perfect time to be planting. Make sure you give your plants a really good water as well this will help reduce some of the stress. So when you are planting out fruit trees make sure that they aren't root bound. This one is very very root bound. I got this for $20 and this is probably why because it's been in the pot far too long. It's all tightly bound with its roots and if I was to plant it like that it would just continue to grow like that. The, the roots wouldn't be able to be unstuck and it would pretty much just stay really small, it wouldn't grow and I don't want that. So as much as it's not good to ruin the roots, you do have to split up the roots if they are root bound. So to do this I just tear away some of the roots, try and loosen it up as much as possible using a hose to blast out some of the soil from in between, freeze up some space as well and then I can plant it in the ground. So this space is far from finished, I'm going to continue to add the little herbs and uh, edible flowers and pollinator plants into the space as well as things that I can use for chop and drop, some uh, plants that create a whole lot of leaf matter that I can use as mulch or ground cover. Finally we're getting a little bit of rain, it's been much needed here, it's been so dry. I don't really think this is going to do much but it might help some of my little seedlings pop up and grow a lot faster. So I just need to harvest as much of the leftover stuff as possible, especially after rain because I don't want all of these fruits or vegetables to split or get damaged. So I have got so many cucumbers off this cucumber vine, I'm just growing it in a container. I have it also growing alongside the Malabar spinach and it has thrived. I think the two together sort of protect each other from the wind and some of that harsh sunlight. Um, so this has worked out to be a really good combination. Lots of chilies. This is a chili plant that I overwintered so it was already established come summer and that way I was able to get a continuous supply of delicious chilies and I have been freezing a lot of these um, to make curries throughout the year. Uh, green curry is definitely one of my favourites but the red chilies are a little bit sweeter um, and just as good. These also split when you get some some rain so it's important that I harvest as much of this stuff as possible. And again the kakuzas have been pumping out. I got so much food off this plant and it's just in a small container. Um, these can be used just as you would a zucchini or a squash uh, so they're really versatile to use in the kitchen. 
And this one is a very strange shape from trying to grow through the mesh. Another plant that has been absolutely pumping out the food this summer has been this bottle gourd. Another huge bottle gourd. This plant has produced so much food. I've got four of these giant bottle gourds so far from one vine and there's heaps more on the plant. All right, so first up we have lime verbena and this is a really fra fragrant plant. It's gonna have heaps of flowers for the bees right next to the lime. So this is a dwarf lime and the new feijo that just planted in here. This one was super root bound. Um, so hopefully it comes right. That is the Nazi Mets feijoa. Uh, an edible canna that I have transplanted from the back this is the blood orange. Lots of delicious oranges on there. The guava that we planted. I planted some comfrey down here in the shade. So I'll hopefully be able to propagate more of this up, which is going to be great for helping me chop and drop and build soil right here in this garden. The mandarin. This is the little native basil that we planted. It's got a little bit burnt from the shock of moving out here, but the other one did this too and it's come right. So it's pretty hardy. This is the other Fijoa with the, the graft, the duffy on the bottom, white goose here on the top. And so it has got um, plenty of space either side. So um, it's hard to tell in some of the clips, but there is quite a bit of space here. The rosella that I transplanted out from further down. Lemonades. This is the olive herb from, um, it was on the on my podcast the other week. If you listen to that or watch that, that's the olive herb. This is the little fig cutting that I was gifted. I've got a few more still in pots. So we've got the white cucumbers, lots of chilies, beautiful red colour. The New Guinea bottle gourd, the Kakuza squash, which is also another bottle gourd sort of plant. That is so much food right there. <laughs> 